Much of Japanese cuisine utilizes miso paste. It's incredibly savory and it's used to season soups and sauces. But today, Keith is going to show us an elegant dish made with white miso. Yeah, so today we're gonna make miso marinated salmon. It's a really elegant dish, but it's also super easy to make and it has only four ingredients. Now this is a take on a recipe that was created by Nobu Matsuhisa at his namesake restaurants around the world. And it starts with a really flavorful paste that we're gonna put over the salmon. You have a half a cup of white miso here. White miso or shiro miso or sweet miso is what we're gonna start with. It's the mildest of the misos. You can use other types of misos, but as they get darker, they're gonna be a little bit more flavorful. So we like that kind of nice, sweet, nutty flavor that you get from the white miso. To that, we're gonna add a quarter cup of white sugar, and that's gonna give the marinade a sweetness that's gonna balance off the saltiness from the miso paste. We also have three tablespoons of sake. That's gonna give the marinade a lot of brightness and we have three tablespoons of mirin, which is another type of rice wine, like the sake, but it's a little sweeter and it's gonna mirror that sugar saltiness in the marinade. And this is it, right? That's right, yeah, four <laughs> ingredients. So we're just gonna whisk this together until it's smooth. It's not gonna be perfectly smooth, it's gonna kind of look like uh, savory applesauce. Miso is one of those ingredients, it's kind of a super ingredient, I call it, because it adds so much flavor and different types of flavor. It's up there with ketchup, in my book, as being one of the perfect ingredients. So you can see this is fairly smooth, now we're gonna move on to our fish. Okay. At Nobu, they use a black cod, which is a white fish. It has a really rich, silky texture, but for most people, it's hard to find. We're gonna use salmon. Similar rich texture and flavor, but everybody can find it. We want four six to eight ounce fillets, but instead of going out and buying four random pieces that are gonna cook at separate times, we're gonna start with a one and a half to two pound piece of salmon cut from the center of the fish. But before we cut this, we kinda of wanna make sure, we wanna run our finger over this part of the salmon. There are what they call pin bones. And if they do have a pin bone in it, you can just take a pair of pliers or tweezers, pull that right out, it's really Great. easy. Take a chef's knife, we're gonna cut it down the center, and cut those halves into halves again. This miso paste is gonna do a couple things as it sits with the salmon. It's gonna flavor the fish, but also it's gonna change the texture of the salmon. So that salt from the miso and the alcohol and the sugar is gonna pull moisture out of that salmon and it's gonna make it denser and meatier when we go to cook it. So it's gonna be a nice contrast of meatiness and soft inside. So I'm just gonna take these and dip it in here. And this miso paste is really quite thick, so it's gonna stick really nicely to that salmon. I'm just gonna transfer this over to a nine by 13 baking dish. You don't really care about getting it on the skin side of it. We're not gonna eat the skin here. But you don't have to worry about it if it does get on there. No, okay. no, certainly not. So we're just gonna put this skin side down. I'm just gonna take the rest of this miso paste and kind of spread it over the top to make sure it's got good coverage here. Okay, I'm just gonna smooth this over. So we're gonna have to let this sit for a while. We want the salt and that miso paste and the sugar to start to draw that moisture out from the salmon. At Nobu, they do it for three days, but I really can't plan dinner more than <laughs> a day ahead in advance. So we're gonna let this go for at least six hours, up to 24 hours, overnight is preferable. So I'm just gonna put some plastic wrap on this. I'm gonna put it in the fridge and we'll come back and cook it. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about miso. Miso is made by fermenting soybeans and sometimes grains such as rye, barley, or rice with a mold called koji. Now you'll find three kinds of miso at the supermarket these days and today we're using white shiro, which is actually quite pale gold in color. It has the shortest fermentation time, so the flavor is very mild. And then there's red aka, which is well balanced with sweet and salty flavors. It's a great all-purpose miso to keep in your fridge. And then there's dark brown or black hacho, and it's the most pungent and complex of the three. It almost has a flavor that's prune-like. So depending on your flavor preference, you've got a lot of miso to choose from. Okay, the salmon sat overnight, and now it's time to cook. Okay. For cooking, we looked at some different techniques, and the hallmark of this dish is a nice, deeply brown, burnished exterior and moist interior. Pan searing didn't work that well. It's too much sugar in the outside, and it burnt before the inside was done. Baking worked okay, but by the time it was browned, it was too cooked on the inside. Sure. So we turned to broiling. We used the intense heat of the broiler to quickly brown the top of this while keeping the inside moist. I'm just gonna put some foil on this rack to make cleanup a lot easier. Oh, yes. You don't wanna get that sweet gunk stuck in between that wire <laughs> rack. It's, it's not fun to clean off. And now I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna scrape this off. And you can see that the color of the salmon has changed a little bit. It's a little bit more translucent. It's a lot firmer, too. 
It's okay if you have some of this miso paste on here. You wanna get the majority of it off because it will burn in the oven if you leave too much on. You kinda have to do this with your hands to get that miso off. You don't wanna run this under the sink or under water or use a paper towel. I'm just putting these skin side down with about one inch between so they can bake nice and evenly. Okay. So I have the oven rack eight inches from the broiler. I've preheated the broiler. We're gonna put the salmon underneath there for eight to 12 minutes until the internal temperature is 125 degrees. Now we're cooking farm-raised salmon. If you're cooking wild salmon, you wanna take it to about 120 degrees. Now, broilers also vary from oven to oven. They so sure do. you wanna make sure to rotate it when we're cooking. Also, the foil is gonna serve as a shield. If we find that it's getting too brown around the edges like we sometimes did, we could just take the foil and flip it up over the corner like that and make sure that the edges didn't get burnt. Oh, that's perfect. <gasps> Still sizzling from the broiler. Oh, yep. gorgeous. So we were lucky. We didn't have to use the foil shield here. We have this beautifully brown color. They're stunning. They are restaurant worthy. Exactly. So I'm just going to transfer these over to a platter and a piece for you. Please. I mean, that crust is amazingly beautiful. It's almost mahogany. I have some lemon wedges here. Okay. Look at that. Super juicy. Oh. Mm. It's very tender, but you're right about that texture. It's almost a little compacted, a little bit denser, but in a really good way, meatier. This fish is all about contrast, mm -hmm. both in flavor and texture. You have the nice meaty outside, but it's still really moist and juicy on the inside. And the flavors also contrast. You have the salty miso, you have the bright sake, you have the sweet from the sugar and the mirin and a little bit of lemon on top of it. It's, it's perfect. Well, this was so easy and elegant. It's kind of the perfect salmon recipe. Yeah, just four ingredients too. Thanks, Keith. So our recipe starts with marinating salmon fillets in a potent paste made with white miso, sugar, sake, and mirin. Right before cooking, remove the excess miso paste, then broil the fillets on a foil-lined rack. So from our test kitchen to your kitchen, a restaurant-worthy miso marinated salmon. And you can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season along with our tastings, testings, and select episodes at our website, americastestkitchen.com. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.